There is silence for the co-chairman of the Bruges Group, Mr Barry Legg. Tonight is an occasion to celebrate the anniversary of a great visionary speech that set out an agenda that would bring peace, prosperity and harmony to the nations of Europe. But tonight, Baroness Thatcher, it is also an occasion to thank you. Lord Tebbit was the most steadfast, the more, most stalwart, and he is the greatest Conservative continuing in this generation. The rules of the game are the same as ever. Monetary incontinence will, like other forms of incontinence, give at moments a feeling of warmth and relief. <laughs> they will inevitably be followed by feelings of embarrassment <laughs> and difficulty. Gordon Brown should know this by now. <laughs> they didn't call them the wets for nothing. What I didn't realise, nor I think did you, at that time, was that your Bruce speech and your famous three no's to Monsieur Jacques Delors proposed three steps, the hop, skip and the jump from the European community to the future European Republic would lead to a coup in which the Euro fanatic conspirators would topple you from office. And that coup opened the way through Maastricht, Antwerp, Nice and Lisbon towards the United States of Europe. For the European establishment, English law is an obstacle to the European Republican project. <laughs> to us, it has long been a protection against overmighty monarchs or politicians and it should now be a protection against the authoritarianism of the Eurostate in Brussels. That doesn't mean that France is less civilised, or that Germany is less efficient, or that I would find life in Italy unbearable. I might even be able to pass away a weekend in a villa in Corfu. <laughs> but for us here in Britain, to fall into the mould of a European state would involve far deeper changes than it would for the mainland states. And our present state, in which we are governed mostly in the first instance by English law, but that that law is open to review and to be overridden by European law, is the worst of all possible words. So what were Lady Thatcher's guiding principles for the future? The first was that willing and active cooperation between independent sovereign states is the best way to build a successful European community. The second was that community policies must tackle present problems in a practical way. Your third principle was the need for community policies which encourage enterprise. Oh dear God. <laughs> it was a clarion call for deregulation, less government intervention, intervention and less state control. And you brushed aside the proposed single currency in favour of the free movement of capital 
and a free market in financial services and investment. And your fourth principle concerned the most fundamental issue, the European country's role in defence. The Euro fanatics have emphatically rejected the Europe of free nations that the Bruges speech envisaged. And the European economic community, for which Lady Thatcher and I voted in 1972, and which the British people endorsed in 1975. When the peoples of the states of Europe are allowed to express their view, they vote for Bruges, not Brussels. The world financial crisis has exposed a dangerous fault in European monetary union. When the chips went down, the EMU states acted each in its own national interest, regardless of their mutual obligations. In short, the euro was exposed as a single currency with 15 chancellors of the exchequer and 15 treasuries. Ladies and gentlemen, as I explained to Ken Clark many years ago, in the long run, there can be only one chancellor, one treasury, one tax system, one economic policy for any one currency. And that means one government and one state. We can see the possibility of a new European community of sovereign, independent states that cooperate willingly together. Most of us would be the existing nation states. But one would be the European Republic. Something better and different than today's European Union is needed. We can conceive of something of the ever closer union of the six founding states that was envisaged half a century ago, combined with something more like you, Lady Thatcher, envisaged 20 years ago, a truly European compromise. There is much to play for. I hope now that the Conservative Party will set out a negotiating brief, that the next Conservative government will take to Brussels early in its first term, and that it would, within two years of the next election, present to the British people the outcome of those negotiations. We can't drift on as we have been drifting these last 20, 30 years towards a European state which would not work and which could not conceivably be in the British interest. It isn't fair to the British people. It is not fair to the other peoples of Europe. It's not fair to the European Union. We need now to show some Thatcherite courage, some determination to lead this country along a path which is not only in our interest, but is in the interest of all the peoples of Europe. We need to get rid of this absurd idea that there can be a Western European state of 27 nations and get back to the reality of the friendship and the relationship that there should be between the nations of Western Europe. That is our ambition.